Hello, welcome to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate your time, uh, considering that we are really close to the Christmas time and everybody is extremely busy. So we really appreciate your time. And we had the pleasure to introduce today our collaborator, Adam Harris. Uh, he will uh, provide copy training for us and he will carry on the, the webinar during today. He will explain uh, the market vision from these uh, current years and um, different strategies. Okay, so let me give you a quick review from him. He's uh, experienced enough. He started uh, in trading uh, since 2008 and he's been providing technical analysis for different uh, revamp platforms, right? So please check, uh, feel free to, to check his profile. Uh, let me give you as well a quick review from our broker, our trading conditions, okay? 14 Prime Global, as a broker, we have a regulation under ASIC and also Vanuatu. Um, we have a different uh, type of trading accounts for different traders. So we have the, the standard accounts with a zero commission, a minimum deposit $100, minimum loss size 0 0.01 lot, and spread is very low from 1.3 pips. Leverage up to 1500 for Vanuatu and EA available execution type is the most important, really high uh, speed execution type uh, easy end, hedging allowed and also scalping is allowed. Okay, so from our easy end accounts, the commission is $3.5 per lot and 0, 0.0 pips. Okay, same conditions. And uh, let me show you our copy trading system. So from our copy trading system, you can follow different traders. You can check their performance and select which is the most suitable for you. You can copy or disconnect the copy trading at any times and you can swap between them and all your funds are ready to be withdrawn at any times. Also, we have the man account available. Um, please check our website and feel free to join us even in demos to check our fastest execution and our trading condition. So we will be really happy if you just test uh, as, as a broker, as a your trust broker, okay? So uh, as a, for withdrawal and deposit method, we have a stick paid, okay? We have, let me, let me show you, okay? So we have different funds, deposit withdrawal, let me show you. You can use USDT, we have our wallet, we have credit card, stick pay, perfect money, bank transfer, and with a very quick withdraw and deposit. And uh, yes, here we go. And um, leave you with Adam Harris. Thank you for joining us. Hello to everyone, thank you for joining us. And um, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Adam Harris for those who couldn't attend the, the last webinar. So now he's gonna explain a, a quick look. I mean, from this current year we're, we're gonna finish, he's gonna explain all the market movement and the most important, uh, yes, a woman he, he will research, okay? okay. Hugo, thank you very much for inviting me this evening. I'm, uh, I appreciate it. I really do. So thank you. And um, yeah, we've got, so what I wanted to do, I do this actually every year and I would like to make this a tradition where we review the, how the markets moved in the, in the, in the latest year and then how we could take advantage of that in the coming year. So it's a really important process because sometimes the year ends differently from how we would have expected. There was a lot of doom and gloom this year and it actually ended on a really strong note. So uh, that's important because there's a lesson in that. That happens a lot, right? So I want to sort of cover that. Um, and I'd love for this to be interactive. We're going to run for 40 minutes. The reason we're going to do that is we're going to try and wrap it up before Zoom kind of uh, finishes, sort of auto completes the session. So we're probably going to run for that. I want to run through the markets. I uh, just wanted to give you some background behind who I am. I do day trade in the morning. I trade the UK session and the US session, which <clears throat> is probably about 90 minutes to two hours in total. I usually look at the end of day charts as well. So sometimes some days 
I a Friday or a Monday, I might run around doing chores and I'm not able to do the day trading session. So I usually look at the daily charts as well to see if there's any setups on the daily charts. And then I also manage my own stock portfolio, but also for a few uh, friends and family where I manage that for them as well. And that really is very easy. So actually going in terms of what's the easiest and the lowest, uh, lowest maintenance, what requires the least amount of time is the stocks portfolio because you're only getting in and out of stocks every few months if you're buying and holding. And whereas there's a, usually getting in on a daily basis or every, every week. So that's what I really focus on. <clears throat> and then now, so tonight we're really going to be focusing on, we'll be focusing on where were the moves uh, and it'll be predominantly from a trading perspective as opposed to an investing perspective. So I want to clarify what that means, what the difference between the two is. Um, and so tonight we're really going to be focusing on predominantly how we could take advantage or potentially talk a little bit about what I think the stock market is going to do next year. So for people who are interested in investing, there'll be a little bit of that as well. But for the rest of us, it dep and the reason for that is because there's really only one market you want to invest in for the most part, and that's the indices or the stock market. You don't really want to invest in currencies. So that's why we're going to cover trading when it comes to those types of things. Okay. Um, so, uh, you let's let's kick off and have a look at that i've got a bit of a timer running so i can i can see kind of how long we have we've got about 30 32 minutes before we sort of want to make sure that i've wrapped up with a whole lot of things um and if you have any questions you can either if you don't want to talk you can just type it into the questions box and i've got the i can see that in here i've got two screens um or if you want to chat then obviously just speak up <coughs> so the biggest difference between investing and trading is they really are two separate activities it's kind of the difference between rugby and soccer and football, right? So they're both played on a field. They've got a similar number of players. They've got different shaped balls, different shaped types of goals, and the rules are completely different. So the one you tend to play more with your feet and the other one you tend to play with both your feet and your hands, you can run with the ball. So if you try to play rugby in a soccer game, it's not going to go well for you. If you try to play soccer in a rugby game, it's not going to work for you. So they are played in the same environment, but they are they have different rules. And it's really important that we understand that there's a different set of rules for them. So with investing, you're usually it's a buy and hold. It's very much time based. You really need to put your money in because it's time based. You can't afford to get in and out and to chop and change too much. And so you need the market that you engage in to really historically be something that goes up. So what that does is that tends to eliminate currencies and most commodities that can for a few years that can go all over the place. And so you, it almost eliminates certain things. And actually, it's interesting because when you get to cryptocurrencies, it actually eliminates cryptocurrencies because you need something that is very high probability, very low risk in comparison. And when you compare all the things out there, you end up with property and stocks. Historically, they tend to be the smartest things that you could go very high degree or a higher probability of success that they'll tend to go up over a long enough period of time. Cryptocurrency is very new. It's a baby industry. So we don't really know what they're going to be yet. They are more volatile. They can go up and down. They have bubbles. They really haven't quite landed yet. Stocks have been around for hundreds of years. Um, cryptos uh, have only been around for at least about a decade. And, uh, and you know, currencies themselves, the currency markets, although they sort of kicked off, the FX markets kicked off in the 70s, they weren't available to the public until the 90s. So they're only 20 something years old. So, um, so we need to understand that it actually eliminates certain markets so that the rest, the, everything else we're looking for here is, is trading. And we're going to be talking about the difference. We are not an institution. We are retail. Or more, it's, a, it's a growing sector of the market. When I got into it, we were 5% of the overall market. We are now heading on, depending on which market, 25% of the market. So it's a growing market. We, are, we have more influence in it. We can actually start to move the market. That's not necessarily a good thing. But what it means is there's more people engaging in the markets. The markets are better regulated. The technology is better. The, the, op, the opportunities are still there. Human beings haven't changed our behaviors at all. So our behavior is still the same, which means that the markets tend to be. And so the opportunities are still very much there. Now, as an investor, you tend to not be too concerned about your where you get in, the, the timing. Usually what happens, this is a generalization, but usually what happens is 
you've got money burning a hole in your pocket, you want to invest it, you put it into the market because your logic is that the sooner it's in the market, the sooner it can, it can start growing and working for you. <clears throat> and that's it. Leave it there. And the longer you leave it there or the, the, you know, if you don't need that money, you tend to, and if it's performing well, you tend to just leave it alone. You might almost never really remove it. You might even add to it. You know, so that's, that's something that most people tend to do as an investment. Okay, same with properties. You're not really out on a frequent basis. But we're trading, ladies and gentlemen. We are looking to earn an income. So it's an income uh, generating activity in the same way that you could be a property investor, but if you're a real estate agent, you're earning an income. So they're, they're in the same, again, they're in the same market, but their, their roles are different and the expectations are different. Real estate agents want to get their salary every month or property traders are flipping properties so that they can earn an income. Um, investors are kind of not really looking for that same type of thing. They're not at initially getting an income from that every single month. So traders are working backwards from the end of the month. They go withdraw money at the end of the month to pay my bills. So therefore I need my positions to close. My, my trades must close before the end of the month, or at least enough of them must close in order for me well to bank the profits. So then what happens is traders tend to be looking at what are my opportunities almost every single week that will last a few minutes to a few hours to a few days, very rarely longer than a few weeks. And that's a very important mindset. They're only looking for opportunities that will almost certainly unfold immediately. And then beyond that, they're not worried. So let me repeat this. Let me emphasize this. Traders are looking for an opportunity that is about to unfold, that has a very high probability of unfolding a certain way. And that immediately they are concerned with. After, in other words, traders are not worried about what gold is going to be doing six months from now. They're only worried about what is gold going to be doing this week. Or for the next few days that's all they are worried about and they're looking for the highest probability move so they can capture that move and that's very important psychologically i know a lot of traders <clears throat> who are not aware that as a trader we are we are looking only for shorter term moves so what do i mean by that well <clears throat> there will be periods over the coming years, as an example where gold will go down it'll be having a correction right so we will be you know, gold will be trending up, but there's periods on the weekly chart, for example, where it's going to be going down and it might be going down for two or three days or two or three weeks. It's generally trending up, but during that period, traders will be looking potentially if it meets their strategy criteria, important, obviously strategy criteria, strategy is a set of rules that should identify a very high probability setup. Over again, you will definitely make more money than you lose. Okay, that's really what it is. So during these periods, traders will almost certainly be taking positions over a couple of weeks. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't think that they're not bullish on gold in the longer term. And that is a, psychologically, that is a very important distinction to make. I'm just going to do something quickly here. Um, Okay. That is really important because a lot of people will battle to take shorter term positions because their longer term uh, outlook is different. And there's a, there's a conflict there. And if there's a conflict, you are in trouble. All right. So um, that's really important. The thing he mentioned here is that if we look at the indices, the indices tend to go up. They're made up of the they're meant to be made up of the most successful companies in a country listed on a stock. They're meant to go up. That's actually, their, that's the purpose. Like you would, it's almost like the Olympics. It's the best athletes. So you would expect if they were companies, if they were corporations, they'd be, they'd be Olympic athletes. You'd expect them to do very well all the time. So the, the basic nature of the indices is to go up more than anything else. But currencies are different. So currencies, you have the supply and demand of the euro, the supply and demand of the euro, 
And <clears throat> the interest rates can impact that a lot and the supply and demand and different economics can impact that. And so they work against each other. So you can have currencies that can go be, the dollar can be incredibly bullish for one year and then incredibly bearish for the next. And they can be seasonal. Commodities are the same. So we need to understand that. Of all, I would say of all the different asset classes, I would say that probably cryptos, which right now cryptos are seen in a way as a bit of a gambling plus. So cryptos are sort of somewhere between indices and currencies. But for the most part, my point here is that we need to understand the basic behavior of these, the general nature of them. Um, okay, so that is very important before we continue so we understand the difference between what we're doing here. So the next thing that I want to talk about, it's a little bit of a strategy that I spoke about in a previous webinar that we did last week. It's available on YouTube. I highly recommend that you watch it. I don't want to repeat too much of it because it's available there. And if we do more of these webinars, we'll be repeating certain elements. So I don't, I want to make sure that you get that opportunity to, to, to not have to, you know, we've got 40 minutes. I want to make sure we use it wildly. Why? that we use it wisely. One of the things I want to show you is there's a lot of media stuff over the last year where, and this is just an example, this type of stuff is showing up in my, in my Twitter stream all the time, where you would get uh, an institution that would talk about how the market is going to crash, the market's going to crash. There'd just be a whole, you should stay away from this and you should sort of do these types of things. So I just wanted to show you how, how all of that, first of all, the most important thing, completely not what actually happened in the markets. Those institutions can get it wrong, for sure. They can definitely get it wrong. And that's a very important thing for you to understand. I work in institutions. The, the, the decision-making processes are different. <clears throat> they, might be having to, uh, they might be having to sell a particular instrument because they're having to balance their portfolio. So therefore, they, they impact a particular stock. And you hear them, this institution is selling 50 million of this. And it's not for the reason you think. It's maybe not because they don't think it's a good investment. It's because they have too much exposure. So there's all these different... So what I want you to do is I want you to understand that as retail traders, we are those small little fish that stick to the bottom of sharks and whales. We're remora fish. We, they move the markets and they battle against each other. So JP Morgan, Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley, uh, Old Mutual, all these different institutions, central. They are the big fish. We're the little fish. We navigate between them. We don't actually mean anything to them. All right, they battle against each other. We are so small in comparison, the amount of, of capital that we trade is nothing compared to them. And they execute directly into the market. So I want you to understand that the best thing about being a retail trader is that we can watch what is happening with the big fish and we can sort of trade in their shadows. We can piggyback on their moves. They, they move the markets. Yes, and if enough of us are in the market, we also add to the movement, but they are primarily what we call market makers. But don't forget that they have to trade against each other and they have sometimes they make decisions that aren't made. Not every decision they make is because there's an opportunity and they can also make big mistakes. They can get panicky. A great example of that is Kathy Woods Arc. She's a massive uh, ETF invest, uh, investor, you know, very famous in that respect. She has consistently bought in at all time highs of particular stocks and sold at all time lows. So she bailed in Nvidia. She bought it when it was at the top and she sold it at the bottom. She lost a lot of money. They can be scared. They can make silly decisions. I just want you to understand that the human nature is not that different. There's not necessarily any, and you don't have to believe me on this. It is the truth, but you don't have to believe me, but I just wanted to kind of start with that. So the first thing that I want to do here is I want to, I'm going to start with the weekly charts. I'm going to bring up uh, a couple of things. I want us to very quickly, where's my word pad? Uh, so our goal here is, were there any moves that we could have seen in 2023 this year that we could have taken advantage of? Were, could we reasonably have taken? Um, and if that is the case, what could we do this for 2024? So the first answer is, in most cases, we could have taken advantage of the moves in the markets. We could have, but you might not believe that, but we could have. So my clients was 39%. I didn't make 40%. I did 39%. I think it'll be more this year. Um, and really a lot of focusing on a, on a mixture of different things, but looking really for strong trends. So what I wanted to say here is there's two types of markets. There's two types of markets here, right? There's a market that isn't moving. It's mixing up its highs and lows. They generally have lower volume. So the markets that are moving 
that are move, moving up or moving down tend to attract other people that start to engage in them. So people start to chase the markets, but also bigger, more experienced players start to add to those positions. They start to engage in that. So trends or moving markets tend to have way more volume and way more power. So they could have, they could have times what it is in a range. As soon as you start going into a range, a lot of traders or, or experienced people just exit that market. That's not what they're looking for. And this is pretty good for us to trade and this is very good for uh, institutions. And algos right now, by the way, a lot of the big institutions, and I know this because I work with them in the city, I work in the city, um, they're too scared of new technology. So a lot of these people are working on technology that's 15 years old. And that's, although there are a few places with a few people, the majority of, of stuff is very old school, especially in London. And they don't know anything about the stuff. I mean, they know of it, but they're not developing it. They're too scared. They get too scared. They go on fundamentals. They go on the old, the old fashion stuff. So, what we want to be doing is looking in the direction of the move, and then, and then what we want to be doing is looking for an entry. So every entry into a move is either on a pullback, market pulls back like this, a retracement, or on a breakout. So when it breaks out to a new high, those are your only your two ways of getting into any moving market as an experienced trader, which means that this area here is really your sweet spot. That's where you're getting in on a pullback or a breakout, that area there. And anywhere else is when you're chasing the market or you're getting in on the wrong, you're out of sync with the market. So you're getting in on the highs and you're getting out on the lows, you're all over the place. So we really wanna be looking for a pullback or breakout. All of those are from a risk management, uh, they're, the best options. So that's what we want to be focusing on really. And once a, move, a market like this starts to move, it generally will break out, retest and start to move. And those are the early stages of a trend. That's the first thing. So once we get early stages of a trend and also something that happens with uh, markets. When I talk, obviously my mouth gets dry. So anyway, so what happens here? I want to show you this is that if a market is going consolidating that it breaks out, it usually is very aggressive. So it goes up, very small pullbacks, very small pullbacks. Then it starts to change it. That runs out of steam a bit, deeper pullbacks, runs out of steam a bit, deeper pullbacks, runs out of steam a bit, you know, and so th this is something that actually tends to happen. And then what could happen is it can either consolidate, take a breather, and then it can carry on doing that, or it could break things. Like and, and it's pretty much just that. You can only buy or sell or do nothing. Those are the only three options in the market. So despite what you hear in the news, despite what you think the fundamentals are, when it comes to executing, in the moment that you execute, there are only two things you can do, buy or sell, that's it. So everything, no matter how you get there, everything only can result in a buy or a sell. So um, that's really important and that once those, those orders are executed, you can see it. So it doesn't matter what someone says. It only matters at the end of the day, money down and they buy or they sell. And when you see that, then, and I'm not saying the fundamentals don't impact it. I'm saying that the fundamentals impact it, but at some point someone's got to push buy or sell. And that you see, you see it on the chart because it moves. If it goes up, people are buying. If it goes down, people are selling. So you don't have to overthink too much because at the end of the day when you see what you see on the chart is really what people have decided to that's what they've decided to take action on and that's a very important thing for you to understand so that doesn't matter what's going on it only matters that ultimately people then chew over it big institutions chew over it and then they decide okay we're going to buy or we're going to sell and you can see it the second they start buying or the second they start selling you can see it and that's important and we want to be able to take advantage of that. So very, very quickly, because we probably only have 15 minutes. There we go. So it's relatively quick. I want to show you something here. Though, I mean, it's not a panicky thing. It's just, we have weekly charts here. And the first thing we could see for the most part with Euro dollar is, although we had a really strong uh, dollar last year with Ukraine invading, um, sorry, Russia invading Ukraine, and we had inflation, and we had a bit of panic and a little bit of uncertainty. Um, we saw a strong dollar. We saw that dollar is not going anywhere because the, the, the global reserve currency, whoever has that, has to take responsibility for all of the world's debts. 
They, they, they have to bail out other countries. They have to do all that stuff. So they become responsible for that. They also have to have a very strong economy. So right now, the US economy is the strongest in the world. It has beaten. So now that China's economy was catching up and it has shrunk to 60 of the US economy. So US economy is still in the lead. And ladies and gentlemen, it is not going anywhere. At the end of World War II, it, the US possessed 95% of the world's wealth. There isn't anyone that has the established credibility and is willing to take on the world's debt. China's not really willing to do that. They're not going to do that. Um, and we and also think of convenience. States and uh, countries would have to change languages. So if it was China, for example, we'd have to move across and everyone would have to learn that. And like, that's just too complicated. Most people wouldn't do it. Okay, so what I mean about that is relax. The US dollar isn't going anywhere, probably not in the next 20 years. It starts, if something looks like it's gonna happen, I'll bring it up. But probably not for the next 20 years at least. Sorry about what you hear in the news. The reality is it is just so unlikely it's not gonna happen. Okay, also, but what about the BRICS? So you hear about BRICS, these other countries that are coming up offering stuff, you hear about cryptocurrencies. Sure, you might have a secondary market secondary market where they start to access you know work with each other and maybe cryptocurrencies become other markets so all you'd get is a you all for certain people will operate at a certain level but when, when you want a certain type of security and you're dealing with trillions you're going to be dealing with dollar. okay so just i'm talking here from experience and i know the right people so it's just it's not going to happen okay so I've been doing this for 15 years. I remember when everyone thought in 2011, the whole world was going to go south and everyone was like, buy gold, buy gold. And then gold went down for the next nine years. So don't, that's another thing. Just understand the markets can go up, they can go down, the conditions can change. So if you're convinced that there's only one market can go because of a YouTube video you watched, please be careful about that kind of stuff. It, it, you know, stuff doesn't go that way. And then they always just make up excuses for why it doesn't go that way. So the first thing is we had a very strong dollar, weak euro. We had this last year, for the most part, the euro hasn't really gone anywhere. It hasn't really gone anywhere. It's, starting, it's looking bullish at the moment, but it's stuck within this range. All right, next up. So this year you would have had tricky shorter term moves as a trader because we didn't have a trend the way we did last year. Okay. So that was a bit tricky. Sterling as well has been stronger. So what does that mean? It means that the most part has produced high highs. It generally looks more bullish. Excuse me, it's still battling here, but for the most part, sterling is actually quite, quite, quite strong. And really, it was the weakest in the previous year. So part of that, what happened was the Bank of England decided to do a couple of tricks with the bonds and a few different, they started to sell bonds and buy bonds as well, different things. And that started to boost the pound. So there are tools available to every central bank to start to move stuff, which is why currencies can swing and change. So just be aware of that. Um, so that was what happened there. This year, you would have had, again, shorter term periods, not the same way that it was last year. And so uh, in, in that respect, you, you, would, you would, again, this is why trading is better, because you have to understand that the moves, and then that's it, they're done. All right, so we go through to dollar yen. So dollar yen is interesting. So the, the, it's interesting because when we have a look at all the yen pairs, I'm just going to move this up here. Sorry, that went the wrong one. I want this up here. And I want to go with all the yen pairs. So when you look at all the yen pairs, for the most part, they've had a very, very long run to the upside. Part of that is to do with the reason for that is very simple. The Bank of Japan, their biggest export partner, they're an export country like Switzerland. Their biggest export partner is the U.S., so they they and they're the best they invented candlestick trading so they they match their currency to keep the economy stable they match the yen to the dollar so they track the dollar quite a bit and therefore when the dollar was strengthening so was the yen pretty straightforward from that perspective and we can see it across the board so the problem was that also again at some point their currency becomes a little bit too weak and then it starts to have negative impacts for people inside so if you're not for when you're importing, all of a sudden things become too expensive. So that becomes a problem. So they have a range where they want it to be. They want it to track the US dollar, but they don't want to get so weak that all of a sudden things are too expensive. Does that make sense? Um, and so you can see here that for and this year it's a little bit all over the place. We can see Aussie yen a lot more choppy, but again, most of 2022 was a big year. And most of 20, I want to 
sum up at this point that 2023 was a breather because 2022 was such a big year. It's very likely that 2024 will be a move again because 2023 was a bit of a breather. Um, therefore, and it had a lot more ranging in it. Therefore, 2024 is likely to be the bigger mover. Okay. So here you can see for the most part, almost all of the yen pairs have been a lot more choppy this year than whereas last year they were moving. And with the exception of, say, Swiss yen. Swiss yen. Switzerland are both export countries. And they both try to keep their kind of currency kind of stable. So for the most part, that's the case. So when we, and again, if you look through, if you just run through a couple of these pairs, there were much more sort of shorter term moves that kicked off. So for example, here's a consolidation uh, patch over here for, for EuroCAD. Um, and this is a weekly chart, by the way. So this is the last couple of months. Um, just trying to, here for a second. Sorry, I'm trying to get someone to bring me a drink because my throat gets so dry and I've, I actually thought I had enough uh, juice, but I don't. So this period here was incredibly choppy. Once this is broken, so the, the good news, the bad news with, with Rangers is they just, they will take your money. It's, they will just, it's like a tumble, tumble dry, spit you out and take your money, whether you're a buyer or seller, it doesn't really matter. The good news though, is that when the market, the longer that consumption range, when it breaks out, that's usually where you get um, a good couple of moves on the trend. So here, for example, look at this. Consolidate, then we had a breakout and so we had a nice little bit of a trend. Okay, and then we had another trend to the upside. We're clearly in one of these current ranges. It could break out to the upside. Or don't overthink it, because if it breaks out to the upside and it continues, hopefully it will then kick into a trend. And those are usually the earliest parts of that you usually get. So right now we've got these charts. I want you to go through the habit of looking at the weekly charts and the daily chart. Is it moving or is it in a, is it? So for example, here, Euro Swissy is in, is trending. It's not in a range. All right. And therefore, um, it could, should continue to go for represent. And again, I want you to remember this. Currencies really, really can go through months here and there where they don't do much. So you, I want you to break. Sorry. I want you to split your currencies into those against the US dollar because they do stuff against the US dollar and then all the cross pairs, all the cross pairs. But that for the last year, a lot of the moves, probably 60% of the trades I took were just against the US dollar. They were just those against the US dollar. In periods with the US dollar, so if you go look at it against the euro and you go up onto the monthly, you had a period for a big chunk of time where that euro did nothing. A big moves, then it moved again, and then it was back in the range, then it moved again. So, and again, you could also potentially maybe in a bit of a range right now. So we've got different things happening. Okay, so I want you to kind of keep that in mind. Then when we get to gold. So what's happening with gold? So first of all, I want you to see that gold had an all-time high in 2011. In its entire existence, it went all the way up. It never experienced anything like this in at least certainly not in the last hundred years. And then it had a correction. And for most of you that weren't necessarily around at this time, it was mayhem. Just like with cryptos, before cryptos didn't exist then. So although nobody knew about them, brokers weren't offering them. Um, basically, they were saying, you've got to buy gold and silver. The world's going to go to, like, going to go to hell. You better buy it now. And then it just crashed. And it crashed for... Eight years. It really went from 2011 till 2019. It broke out and it stayed below that. And most people, nine or eight minutes. So let's work with that. Let's work with eight minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me up with that. Um, and it stayed there. So why do I want you to pay attention to this? I want you to understand that no matter what the media or a, a forum that you're involved in or somebody that you subscribe to who says, this is never going to come back down, whether it's a cryptocurrency or a property index. It always does. Like there's a point where it just can't go. It might go for a year or another year. And if you watch the big short, you know that stuff. It can go for longer than you think. But no market, and I mean it, is immune 
from a big correction. And gold is the thing that's been with humanity since the beginning of time. So if that can have a correction, that can have a bubble and can fail, anything can. I just want you to understand that. So right now what's happening is gold had a beautiful consolidation. It broke out. It is trending higher and it's trying to break higher. There's a very strong probability that gold will continue higher. But the problem is that everyone thinks, well, potentially some people think that gold is going to be this beautiful trending, easy trading market. It, there isn't a guarantee it's going to do that. It could do this. It could go up and then down and up and down. We could find a year from now it has gone up, but it was completely untradeable. That can happen. This is tradable, tradable, because it's much more choppy. This is super tradable. So there's a difference between being if the market's going to move and that it's tradable. And I think that's another thing as well is that we look at certain markets and go, well, that went up. Could I? I should have grabbed a bit of it. No. Let's look at Bitcoin. So let's go and have a look at Bitcoin. Let's go to the weekly. Let's look at the day. Or here, let's look at the weekly. Weekly is better. And actually what happens is, let's talk about this. It was here forever. Then it broke up. It had its first bubble. Sorry, that was its first bubble over here. It had its second bubble and a third bubble. And everyone's like, third bubble is definitely got to go now. It doesn't. It could continue to have bubbles. Cryptocurrencies have attracted more gamblers than any other market. For some reason, it has this brand association where people are going to, they want to gamble with cryptos. They don't want to gamble with currencies. They don't want to gamble with gold. They want to gamble with cryptos. So cryptos are more likely to have bubbles for, for now. Let's just say, let's just assume we will keep having bubbles for the next few years. Let's just, it's safer to do that. Um, mm, sorry, and you can see here, it's starting to break out. But the beautiful thing is, for the most part, is that when you the think general environment... That? Sorry, do you yes. think we are in, in a new bullish market again in cryptos? Yes, we are. Yes, okay. we are. So, um, yes, we are. And so I'll go to the, I'm going to go to the index now. I just want to tell you that they tend to track when the markets, when people are feeling optimistic and are bullish. The, generally speaking, cryptos go with it. So you, you, if, you, if, you, you, if you just love cryptos, you also need to look at the indices. So you need to look at the S&P 500. Why the S&P 500? There's 500 companies in it. They brands around the world, McDonald's and Nike and Starbucks, everything. They're all in there. And they're old. So if, if the S&P is bullish, generally that means the whole world is bullish, which means cryptos are bullish. It's a general, and it is, we are. So, um, I, because we have, we're limited on time. I, I think if we do another way, and I want to talk about why we're in a bull market, I would focus that webinar just on how you know we are in a bull market. But here's the here's the long and short of it. We are producing. I'm keeping an eye on the clock so I can see what's going on here. Four minutes forty five seconds. We are producing on the weekly high lows, high highs. Don't worry about why it's going up. That that's the stuff crazy. That's like an somebody it's like an ex relationship, an ex girlfriend or an ex boyfriend that just makes you go crazy because nothing they say makes sense. Don't worry about that stuff. Trust your eyes. If you can see it going up, it's going up. I promise you this that at this period, lots of people are saying crash. Over here, people are saying the market's gonna crash. Nobody foresaw this. If you see this period, people are saying the market was gonna crash. It's always, there's always, always, always gonna be stuck. People saying the market's gonna crash. But the fact of the matter is that if it's producing new highs, it's bullish and it should. Over time, companies should always be making money. They are. Let's look at the, the announcements. All these companies are talking about, about that. Okay, um, so we have, so yes, we're in a bull market, but now it becomes about timing. So because we have very little time and I want to kind of, I could talk about this forever. I really could. And I really would love to do a series of webinars where we talk about strategy and do this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring in moving averages. So I'm going to bring in nothing complicated, nothing complicated. I have a 50 period moving average, 20 and a 10. And they can be simple or they're not that different from each other. I don't want to worry about it. But generally speaking, if the weekly chart is above the 10 and 20, we're in a bull market. If it's above the 50, we're in a bull market. Here it goes below the 50, we're in a bear market. There's like six criteria that I have worked out if we're below it. But if we're above the 50, generally speaking, we are in a bull market. We are absolutely in a bull market. So 
The reason I want you to trust this is when you look at the history of this, right? We had this big move, the most aggressive we've ever had, and we had a beautiful correction, and now we're going up again. So this was our bear market. That was our bear market. That was the same thing we had there. It's the same bear market we had. This was the 2007, 2009 global financial crisis. That was it. That was the last bear market we had. And then we had COVID and now we have this. We've had a beautiful correction. We are now in our next bull market. You can't go through a whole year and a half of bear market, then start a bull market, then go back into a bear market. It doesn't work that way. Okay, we are now in our next bull market. The question is, how long will it last? Well, from here to there, it was years, years and years and years. They usually last five to 15 years. So what I want you to do in a way is relax. We are in a new bull market. The only question now is we will have those corrections. So we have one minute 59. So for example, we will have periods where the weekly comes down and that weekly could last three or four weeks, maybe a month. And the media will be like, this is a bear market. It's okay. I know. Thank you, baby. So, and the media will be like, we didn't, this, it'll be incredibly negative because it'll be two or three weeks or maybe a month or two of just the stock market getting fresh lows. This correction and it'll move. Don't worry about that stuff. Look at the weekly, look at the monthly. It gives you the biggest perspective because it always does. And we really are in that period of time. Okay. So there we go. I went and spilled on myself. Sorry about that. Um, but, and so don't worry about why, because there's a lag six months from now, then the media will say, well, we're doing really well. We had a bull market and so on and so forth. But that is, I've been around long enough. I've seen it all. So that's why I know. Okay. So we are, but we are a little bit overextended. We do, we do need to have a bit of a correction. So maybe January or February, we'll have a move down to here and then we'll carry on up from here. One of the things I want to do because we've got one minute left is we want to create these webinars where at least every few weeks, if not every month, we are updating you on the status of to stay away from which markets we need to have correction, which markets are just starting their moves. That's really the plan. So ladies, because I know we're going to get cut off any, any minute now. Um, I want to say to you, thank you very much for joining me. Thank we're you really very much. Adam. It was a really good uh, review. Okay. We will notify you with the next webinar. And if you enjoyed this, please provide us with some feedback and input, and we will obviously endeavor to create this content for you. But really our goal here is to, prov I point you in the direction of which way, of which way the market's going. Okay, guys, thank you very much for joining us. Um...